Hello friends, Ronald here. Today I'm going to be beginning my politics uh, education series uh, and we're going to be starting with the problems of first past the post or FPTP or FPP, load of acronyms for it but the main one is FPP. Now before I can educate you on this I must first tell you the basics, the very basic basics of UK politics. Now don't worry, this shouldn't really take long. So first off, Britain is made up of 650 voting areas. Each voting area is known as a constituency. Now each constituency has one representative. These representatives are elected by the area's voting public, known as constituents. The people elected are known as MPs or members of parliament. This is because whenever a representative is elected, they gain a seat in the House of Commons. Now, though this may seem like a sound deal, that's actually the main problem with the first past the post voting system. This is because the numbers of MPs or members of parliament or representatives a party gets is not proportional to the amount of votes they get. We can show this by simplifying the British system into three constituencies, each containing 100 voters and two parties. I have made some tables in PowerPoint that are now probably on the screen for you guys, uh, showing you these uh, constituencies and the way they are working. So in the first area, as you can see, party A receives no votes at all. However, party B receives all 100 votes. Now in the second area, Party A receives 51 votes, and Party B receives 49. And the same in the third area, Party A receiving 51 votes, and Party B receiving only 49. This means that Party A only receives 102 total votes, which is 34% of all the votes. And Party B receives 198, 66% of all the votes cast. Now, surely this means that Party B gains power, right? No, wrong. Party B only managed to receive a majority vote in one constituency. So they only have representation in 33% of the country. Whereas Party A managed to receive a majority vote in two areas, giving them 66% representation. So they gained the majority and get into power, despite the fact that a large majority of the country did not vote for them. They still managed to get into power. As we can see, in this graph, Party B did win a clear majority, in fact, ne very nearly double that of the opposition. This ultimately means that Party A was not elected by a majority of the country, and therefore a majority of the country will not agree with them getting into power. This causes people to question just how representative the government actually is, and how legitimate their legislation is. You can probably see where this would cause friction between the government and the general public. This is also thought to be one of the main contributing factors that cause the participation crisis that we see today in Britain. I will go into further detail uh, explaining the participation crisis at a later date. For now, we will look at another factor caused by first past the post. Along with the chance of unfairness and misrepresentation comes wasted votes. Now, these are more or less exactly what it says on the tin. They are votes that are wasted. So, to understand this a bit better, we're going to look at another table. Sorry, but I like tables. So, we got the same figures, three voting areas, two parties, and 100 voters. But this time, we're going to replace the total areas won and percentage of seats won with the total number of votes wasted. See that party A and party B received the same amount of votes from the constituents from all three areas. But now we see the problem. In voting area 1, party B gained 41 more votes than it needed in order to secure the win. In voting area 2, party A did not get any votes over that what was needed, but instead, 49 constituents' votes were wasted simply by voting for the losing party. This is repeated in voting area 3. This means that even if a party wins by a vast majority, or a 2% vote difference, the same amount of votes are wasted. As we look at the graph, we can see that the number of wasted votes in this system are always the same using first past the post. And in fact, 
the total amount of votes wasted almost adds up to half of the total votes cast. Again, not only does this mean that a large majority of the constituents are not represented, it also means that their vote means nothing. This can generally lead to voters feeling a sense of apathy towards voting, and thus cr it creates a participation crisis, rendering election turnouts the lowest they have been for around about 40 years. In the next UK politics lesson video, I'll be going into further detail regarding the participation crisis, and if you enjoyed this video and or learned something, make sure to press that like button and subscribe for more. If you wish to study this further, links to relevant Wikipedia sources and the transcript will be in the description. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.